Hey, how you doing? This is Africans Arise. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't already. Just click subscribe here, join these people. And also check out the Facebook page, which is Africans Arise Now. So go to the page here and click like so that you can keep up to date. And also I'm on Twitter, it's at Africans Arise. In this video, I want to talk about the whole issue of African uh, Africa's... Uh, problems with regard to the borders and uh, you know the time it's taking Africa to to sort out the, the sort of nation building issues, state building issues and what I really want to say in this video is that African countries have only been independent for you know what most of the African countries were were still colonies in 1960 particularly most of the sub-Saharan African countries. You know, I think Ghana was the first one to, be, to get independence in 57, I think it was. And most of the, Af most of the rest of them got their independence during the 1960s, Uganda, uh, Nigeria, Kenya, uh, well, not Zim Zambia, Zim Zimbabwe was much later. And, and, but anyway, most, you know, we're talking, we're, this is 2016 now. Most of the African countries only got their independence in, you know, within, in living memory, you know, the last 50 years, say, 50, 50, 60 years or so. The significance of this is that we should allow ourselves, while it's good for us to be really keen and eager to make sure that Africa can unify and, or, you know, Afri African countries can develop and, and, and progress and so forth, we should bear in mind the fact that it takes time for African, for, for countries, for states to become stable, prosperous and, and prosperous. Europe, and this is the point I'm going to make in this video, European countries didn't become stable, unified countries in two minutes. It took them hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples of this. Italy, you might think Italy is a country that, you know, is very ancient and goes back to the Roman times and whatnot. And in a sense, that is true. But as an actual nation state, the kingdom of Italy was only created in 1871, less than 150 years ago. You know, it took a long, 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 long time. So this is this is YouTube, uh, sorry, the, the Wikipedia page uh, that you can look at. And it talks about how, you know, from the 15th century to the 19th century, a period of 400 years of ebb and flow before Italy became a, a, the country that we recognized as being Italy today. Likewise, Germany, you would be, I'm always sort of, you know, I always like to bring Germany's case up because Germany is considered to be like a, you know, a, a model state in many ways, say for the, the whole Nazi thing and whatnot. But aside from all that, you know, it's seen as a model country, but Germany only became a country, a nation state in eight, officially in 1871 as well. Before that, there were lots of smaller principalities and kingdoms and fiefdoms and so forth that had grown up after the collapse of the Holy Roman Empire. So again, you know, you've got Prussia. Yes, Prussia was a big, big, uh, you know, big force in that area. But then there was all these other smaller kingdoms and fiefdoms. So again, Germany only became a country that we know today in 1871, even even Britain, England, Britain, it took centuries upon centuries upon centuries for the, the people of this country to become, to turn, to, to create what we now know to be Big Britain or Great Britain. So this is, again, is a Wikipedia page, which is fascinating stuff, goes all the way back to, first of all, the, the, the Britons, you know, who, who, who settled who had settled in the country, the, 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 the ancient Brits and the, the, I suppose the Celts and the, the Gaelics and whatnot. Then you've got in the, from the, I think it's from about the fourth century onwards, Germanic people started to, to come into the, the, this area from, from parts of Germany. So there were several tribes. So this map here is a good map that shows there were Jutes, there were Angles and there were Saxons. Anglo-Saxon comes from a combination of these two tribal tribal designations, the Angles and the Saxons. Look, they came from Germany, what's today is known as Germany and Denmark. They came and settled into uh, what has you know what we know now as England, Britain. In the north, there were the Celts, and, and in the obviously in Ireland here there were the Celts, and then the the formation of the United Kingdom 
uh, sorry, the the looking through the history of of England, I find very fascinating, particularly the the, the period of the Ang the Angles and the Saxons, because they came and the, the reason why we have places like Essex, Sussex. Uh, Wessex, there used to be a place called, you know, East Anglia is basically, sorry, East Sa Essex is basically East Saxons. Sussex is the South Saxons. Wessex was the West Saxons. Then you have East Anglia and, uh, East Anglia and, what is it? Yeah, East Anglia was basically East Angles, you know. This is where these place names get their, get their names from. They, these were Germanic and sort of Scandinavian type people who came and settled. Then, of course, you had the Vikings coming from from uh, from Denmark, again from Denmark. You know, some centuries later, they started to come and and raid and uh, settle. And if you've ever seen a, a a TV series called The Last Kingdom, I love that series because it it's based on this period where the 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 Sax the Angles and the Saxons, the Anglo Saxons, were basically faced with this uh, menace coming from the Vikings, particularly from the north. And why I like this series is because it. It kind of shows how the you know the, the English England became a thing, Ang England, Angle Land, the land of the Angles. How England became a thing and how that came about as a result of interactions between the various different tribes who had come from Germany and from the from the uh, Scandinavian region. So this took you know we're talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. English unification here, tenth century, you know. Britain only became a thing much, much later in like the 1700s. Then uh, Scotland was unified with England and so forth and, and whatnot and whatnot. My point is basically that let's, let's be careful not to be so down on ourselves as Africans that it's taken us so long and uh, you know to, 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 to create the countries that we would like to create. Yes, we would wish that this, uh, this process would be quicker and uh, you know, we could, we should do what we can, particularly those those who live in the continent. You know, do what we can to kind of uh, to kind of make it make it happen. But let's let's just be aware of the fact that it, you know, for all we know, it could take another couple hundred years before most African countries are stable. I know we wouldn't want to want to kind of hear that, but it could take another couple of hundred years because it's take it took Europe hundreds of years. It took other parts of the the world hundreds of years. Africa basically, you know, was was developing and progressing. Uh, there were some big, uh, big regions that were that, that had uh, kind of developed, particularly in the north of Africa and and in the west of Africa as well. The the Western Sudan, so called, there were there were kingdoms there that had uh, that had formed. And here you got Songhai, Mali, the Hausa people, the the Akan confederation, the Ashanti people and so forth. In East Africa, there were the, the Baganda and the, the Bunyoro kingdom and down in Zimbabwe and so forth. There were kingdoms, there were kingdoms of big entities that were that had been created, but this was interrupted by colonialism, which didn't actually last for that long for most of Africa. Most of Africa was only colonized in around about 1900. So, you know, we're talking only a little bit over a hundred years that Africa has been you know, has had this uh, colonial experience and then coming out of that to then try and create and formulate all of these uh, these nation states. So basic point is, you know, let's don't be too down on the time it's taken Africa to, to sort out the nation states and to develop and so forth. Um, and just, you know, we'll, we'll get there in the end. Just be aware it might not be in our lifetimes, but we'll get there in the end. And when we do, it will be worth the wait. All right, thanks for watching. This is Africans Arise once again. You can check out the uh, the YouTube page, which is Africans Arise Now. And also remember to subscribe to the channel by clicking subscribe. If you liked the video, please like it. Let me know your thoughts, your comments and whatnot. And I will see you next time.